Hey everyone, and welcome to this unique episode of Underground Video Network's Nerds and Cars Getting Slurpees, or, or, or We Talk Too Much, which is funny because, look, for anybody that's concerned, I have been in more than a few car trips with my buddy here. Don't worry about it. He's looking. He, we got this. <laughs> but no, so many times me and Richard have been coming back from a small show or something. We, you know, we start talking about stuff. Basically, it's how the show started <laughs> in general. Instead of a comic book shop where we talked about stuff, it was like the car drive. So yes, welcome to this episode of We Talk Too Much. Uh, the people that are actually watching this and not just listening to it, you're in for a treat. <laughs> Uh, but we're trying a new camera. <laughs> basically, that's what it is. Is Richard wants to use this as a, a tax write-off. He bought a new toy. If he can use it for quote unquote work, but no, we had something. We were we're just not coming back from Piqua. And we was at the Piqua Comic Con, mm -hmm. which has been a tradition to us. We've been going there basically ever since it started. Yeah. And uh, on our way to the show, we talked about doing this. We were like, well, what are we going to talk about? As of us talking right now, the season finale of Doctor Who just dropped last night. I knew we were going to be talking about it today, so I made sure to watch it. So, uh, spoiler alert, uh, we are going to be talking about the season finale of Doctor Who. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I, I loved it. I loved it. Even even as early as this morning, God, the internet, it's give and take. People loved it. People didn't like it. People have been pissing on this season for the wrong read. I've loved, I've loved it. And last night's season finale, I loved. Rich? Yeah, it, it, made, it really made the season, I think. Um, you... For a little spoiler warning here too, but he said might want to go back and watch an old uh, episode of Tom Baker. You know. Yes. Um, which, if you're a, a fan of the show and you follow us on uh, Facebook and MySpace and LinkedIn, don't we have you know all those? Um, the man here was on the ball. He knew right away where it was going, what was going to be coming. We both did our homework. Individually and rewatch the episodes. Richard's been posting pictures on the website from it, the episodes. It's the Pyramids of Mars uh, four-parter. Uh, watch the first one, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, I'll, honestly, watching it last night, Richard was the first time in a while that, as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Oh, chills, goosebumps, <laughs> excited. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm in, I'm enjoying this because I like this show and I like the episode. I was genuinely excited. And man, you want to talk about some brilliant, deep cut nostalgia callback. I mean, just, <laughs> just this entire season alone leading up to the revelation that no... Uh, Susan Twist was not an anagram for Susan. Right. I still think they reached a little bit getting S U T K E C oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. from Sue Twist. That was a little. That one. That was a little bit of a reach, but it still worked. It still worked. It. Ooh, hey there, dude. <laughs> and the idea. Of it being Sutek being the one that we were we were warned about from um, all the way back from the introduction or not the introduction but the 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 the, the toy maker you know it's like oh I'm not the one you need to be worried about you know so it, it wasn't this was laid out right yeah it was a it was a continuation really I mean really, it really it, it, the storyline really developed and it grew and then it developed and it grew. So. And it was great that it wasn't just like a small little Easter egg callback to the original. Like you said, the entire season has been laying the groundwork for. And I mean, to go Tom Baker era, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that is. That is 
bold because I would say a, a very large a percentage of the the uh, fans of Doctor Who currently probably weren't even alive. Right. I was a kid. And us over here in America, we had to watch it on the uh, PBS station. PBS, which was <laughs> PBS Channel Six Saturday night, six or like eight o'clock, you know. But then Shute Gatwa and. It was it was well done. Yeah, I think I can understand why he might have had that little bit of fear, you know, because mm, you know, because mm -hmm. he actually he's been showing that a little bit this season. You know? Yes. And I think what it was leading up to, because he probably did remember like these. Oh, oh no, yeah. You know, and I mean, well, it, you can understand. Yeah. And it's like he told Melanie, which. Oh my god, I adored her. I was so happy to see her. Uh, like he told Melanie, um, this wasn't a a new kid. This wasn't a new baddie that is like, of course, the doctor is fearless. You bring me a new mind. Like the episode with the devil. Um, with David Tennant when they're uh, on the asteroid. Right. He faced the living incarnate of the devil, didn't buy a knife, because you know why? I don't know you. Why should I be afraid of you? You look big and scary, but I know I'm smarter than you. No, no, no. With the toy maker and suit tech, there is history. He knew to be, he knew what was coming. Like the Daleks. He knows to be afraid of the Daleks. But he knows he can defeat him. Or he knows he can figure out how to yes, defeat him. Yes, but when it came to Sutek and the Toy Maker, to say he defeated them, he didn't really defeat either one of them. He tricked them right. and imprisoned them, but he didn't really defeat them. So yes, seeing the fear in his eyes was very expected, you know. Right. You know, and then the whole, you know, this whole season's been really short and fast, you know, because, you know, we got to learn a little bit about Ruby in this one. Yes, I will say that is my only one big complaint about this last season was being too short, even by Doctor Who standards. Right, it was only, what, eight episodes? Yes, and normally that wouldn't bother me, you know, we're, we're used to that. You know, now with all the other streaming services, you know, most shows are... We've even talked about it, Richard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but but it's done, we, We've done old episodes where we think some of them are, like, too long even being eight episodes. But the but, thing about it is, the, the, the huge difference is, is those were self-contained stories, stories from eight... This yeah. is a series. Right. This is a con continuing series. But it overlapped and had that element that went from episode to episode. Yes. Episode. Even though I don't think a couple of them played in the right order. Though. Yeah. No, they weren't because, I, if I remember correctly, I think it was the episode uh, with Fine Time might have been the first episode they shot. Right. <coughs> but it didn't feel like in, in order a couple of episodes. Yeah. But the thing that really hindered the show this season with it being so short was is we didn't get that time us as viewers didn't get that time with Ruby and the Doctor together to form that bond. Right. I mean, we saw it sort of from right from the beginning. Yeah. Like, they, like the, when he caught her drink and stuff. To me, that's that started it, but we just didn't see the continuation. The chemistry was there. The chemistry between Ruby and the Doctor was palpable. They had great chemistry. But we didn't get that time together like we did with Rose and Donna and Martha and Eve to really, to really get the feeling that these people would lay down their lives for the Doctor because they cared that much because they had bonded that well. Right. We didn't get that. Hell, one of the episodes with uh, 73 yards. Right. Was just 
Ruby. It was just Ruby. I'm not. I'm not. It was that, a great that was episode. A great episode. Yeah. But you see what I'm saying? We didn't get that that bonding. Right. Yeah. Because because the you know the doctor disappeared right from the beginning <laughs> and put her totally out there on her own, which was crazy for a person yeah. that really hadn't been doing it for that long. Yeah. Which was another great callback. We'll get to here in a minute. But no. That being said, they had great chemistry. I could see the love between the the platonic that to me is what their relationship is what I oh I don't want to say expect because I'm not anybody important but that is the relationship I love in a doctor and a companion I love the love the platonic mutual respect I will lay down my life for you but it doesn't mean I want to snog you right you know uh, but even though we didn't get to s we didn't get to see it build, we felt it. We we felt those moments, and that that reveal of Sutek. Oh my lord! Oh, and, and he looks so much cooler. You know? <laughs> oh my god! And I love how they even explain that all that time that Sutek was hanging onto the target. He <laughs> evolved. Which again, I'm gonna. I'm gonna throw a level of disbelief. This is a, for all intents and purposes, a god, which we're not. You know, we're not so. We've gotten away from in Doctor Who. Right. It's like the Scooby Doo effect backwards. Like, oh, it's a god. Yeah, no, it's not. It's an alien creature. Right. No, no, no. This time, you know. This was a powerful. This creature. was a powerful god. Him chilling on the back of the TARDIS all this time and nothing. Registered, nothing picked it up. You yeah, know? yeah, except for that moaning sound or whatever. Yeah, that one time, you know. <laughs> that was a bit of a stretch, but the concept was great because. Well, that was his whole plan to be able to wherever they stopped, he was leaving part of his. Yes. His, um, the death, you know. He was literally. Oh my God, Richard! Here's what it was. Sutek was. For, he was a dog. So basically what you're saying is every time the TARDIS landed, he marked his territory. <laughs> oh, oh, we're in Mesopotamia. Cocks his leg up, takes a piss. Oh, look, there's a new Susan Twist. And even that was explained very well. Yeah. I liked that. That he created Susan Twist, all these different versions. But I really liked that moment at the end with, with her. Like, am I no, not real? Yeah. No, you are real. You are very real. There were so many moments in the season finale that truly felt like real classic Doctor Who. Yeah. Like did. we were yeah. revisiting, like his inner heart now was, <laughs> you know, coming out. But which one? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which heart? <laughs> um, but, but it's like I said, this was really good. And then we also got to see more of Unit in this too. From last week to this Yes. Week. And look... One of my biggest takeaways from this entire last season, I want, I need, I will crowdsource, kick fun, jumpstart, whatever the hell you people call it, I want a unit show. Especially with their tower. <laughs> Especially, yes, unit moved into the British Avengers Tower. Come on, we all know it. Like, I'm waiting for... You know what's going to happen, Richard? There's going to be a big, another big alien invasion, and the NIT is going to fall off and just be you. <laughs> just like Stark Tower just left the A. It's going to be you. But no, I love everything with UNIT. I want, Every one of those characters was solid. But why does the TARDIS have to come in as a skid landing? I love that. <laughs> that is so bizarre when it comes in and lands like that. No, and it's funny you mention that because I watched the behind the scenes thing with the uh, the young man that played the one uh, science genius that was on the oh yeah the, the Segway. Yeah, I can't remember yet. I can't remember his name. I apologize. I adored him, and I found out he's thirteen. Oh wow. He is a, he is a kid, but it was a behind the scenes thing, and he talked about that too. Because he goes, the one thing that was really weird, I'm not even going to try to do the British accent, especially a young child, but to film it, they literally had a guy outside the door roll a tennis ball, so 
they wouldn't watch the tennis ball. You know, their eye line wasn't at the tennis ball, but their eye line here still followed it. Oh, wow. So they were all watching the same place. He goes, it was just so weird because we had to do that a few times because sometimes he'd roll the ball.